about to leave already packing come with me i'm not really asking we'll get away to a place where we don't know I'm Tony and I'm Michael and welcome to our channel. Welcome to our channel. So today we're going to be talking about the uh, Melrose Trading Post. Yes. Uh, yet the last episode we talked about Melrose, but we it, did mention the Trading Post. We did and we had actually considered putting the Melrose Trading Post in the episode, but after kind of looking at things we decided to do its own episode, kind of dedicate this entire episode to the Melrose Trading Post. Yeah, because it kind of warrants it. So, um, so yeah, so we, uh, we, we went, uh, we actually filmed the episode, um, uh, a few months back, um, and it was a little gray, uh, when we went, actually it wasn't really gray, but it was, it wasn't, it wasn't a perfect day. Um, it was a beautiful day. It was just cold. Yeah. It was, uh, it was kind of still during the winter months. And so we decided to revisit it again and add some new footage. To that well, episode. and the other reason why we decided to do that is because um, we visited the location during COVID. And so there wasn't a lot of people there. This time it was booming. There was a lot of people there. Yeah, it was very, very busy when we went this a uh, couple of days ago. <clears throat> um, and um, so we, we took an opportunity to uh, visit with Pearson Blatz, who's the executive director of the and founder of the, of the market. Um, so we're, Kind of the our focus of our episode today is going to be Pearson kind of talking about the history of the market and his involvement with the market, um, and we're going to kind of react to some of the stuff that he's saying during the uh, during the interview. But what is the Melrose Trading Post? Well, it's market. What kind of market? Um, <laughs> it's a flea market. Okay. Yeah, because the last time we couldn't decide, you couldn't decide whether to call it a flea market or you definitely said it wasn't a swap meet. No, it's not a swap meet. No. no. It's definitely a flea market. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I it, you, we spent a lot of time going to traveling to Europe, but we went to London, we went to Portobello Road. Um, we went to Clean Core Market in Paris, which are, you know, both of those are very, very famous. And one of the things about the flea markets in Europe is that's where kind of people come together. It's like a really kind of a coming together place. It's not just about the shopping. It's about kind of the community. And uh, in fact, in Portobello, uh, that's a place where a lot of the major fashion designers uh, around the world kind of go there to look at the youth that are at the market and kind of see what they're wearing, what kind of stuff they're putting together. And that often in the past anyway, used to influence kind of what they were going to do with fashions that, that season. So uh, markets are kind of all about different kinds of things. It's not just about the shopping, although shopping really is important. Uh, so, and the Melrose Trading Post um, is actually one of the very first markets of its kind in the city itself. And we've had other markets around Los Angeles, but uh, in terms of a market being in the city itself, I think Melrose Trading Post is probably the first one back in, uh, I think it's 1997 is when they founded. So uh, uh, let's let's hear what Pearson has to say about how he got the mark, how he started the market, and uh, we're going to react to some of the stuff that he that he says. So we just uh, celebrated our, uh, you know, over 20 years at, at at the trading post. The reason I started it was because I was an actor and I was lonely. I didn't have no many people. And I wanted a place where I could see other people on a regular basis and find connection, find community. That is really why I started it. And that's why I started it as a nonprofit. So it's here to benefit a lot of things, including Fairfax High School, including the arts. Yeah, so um, the one thing he mentions is that, which you have to think back, you know, 1990s, Los Angeles, 1997. The, again, there weren't a lot of places to come together in the city, and you know, it kind of it, it, lonely here, uh, or you could have in the past. And he created the market kind of out of necessity for himself, right? Uh, almost. <laughs> it was his match.com. It was his, yes, his match.com. <laughs> um, but he, he was looking for not necessarily a romantic match, but he was looking for, you know, people to interact with yeah. in the community. And so, 
Um, for him, it was out of necessity that he created the market, it, it, is, it seems. And um, uh, so, uh, yeah, it's, inter it's interesting because now we have all kinds of places, including the market, but that was a very unusual thing at the time. And he kind of, so he's kind of an innovator. Uh, we've raised over $8 million for Fairfax High School over 20 years. So, uh, and a lot of people have met here, gotten married, made connections, me the same. So I think the core, the core mission of bringing people together and, and showing people what Fairfax High School is, what a public school is like, and then for the public high school students to see what it's like in their surrounding community, that has not changed. Making connections between people is what we do. The tools we use to do that has changed over the years. The trading posts has remained steady, but now we have a beautiful theater where we produce, we produce plays, we produce poetry, we produce music. Another way of making connections between people. The Trading Post is actually under the nonprofit called Greenway Arts Alliance. And that is a nonprofit that has arts education for students, right? It has, uh, it has a theater, so we produce theater, we produce uh, poetry, we produce music. And then, uh, then the Trading Post happens on Sundays and the money we raise from the Trading Post helps us to produce the art, right? Produce the things that don't make a lot of money. We have a, a full season of plays every year. Um, every uh, every Tuesday night, we have the De Poetry Lounge and over 200 poets come to our theater. It's called Greenway Court Theater. And uh, and it's now um, the most, uh, or easily, the most successful ongoing poetry venue in the country. Yeah, so uh, one of the things about the market, which is really kind of pretty incredible, is um, is it really serves to kind of underwrite the, um, uh, the, the theater that's there on property. So there's the Greenway Arts Alliance, which is the nonprofit that operates the market, but also operates the theater. And at a time when theaters are really struggling right now, um, he has found a way to drive um, uh, revenue to the, the theater and keep it alive and keep it, keep it really viable. Um, it's really, really hard to do. And he's, he's managed to find a way to do that and do it very, very successfully. Not only that, but it also helps to fund the high school, the high school programs. Yeah. So the, the purpose for what he what he did and what he does is he gives grants to Fairfax High School, uh, which yeah. helps with the uh, beautification of the school, um, with um, purchasing equipment for the the sports activities that they have there at the school. But most importantly, because at one time LA cut funding to the arts, and so his organization provides that fun that lack of funding, yeah. and he does it with the with. The theater. As a matter of fact, did you know that the theater was actually um, built in, in 1939 as a social hall? And it was a project of the students, by the students of uh, Fairfax High School. I know. Yeah. And it was utilized as a, a, as a social hall for the students and for the faculty there. And it, it was left abandoned and... Um, they noticed it and they asked the school if, if they could take it over. And I believe it was in 1997 or 1999, um, renovations uh, started to happen with the hall. And that's when they turned it into the theater. Um, hmm. Of course, the Greenway uh, um, Court Theater or yes, the Greenway Court Theater. And, um, and it opened in the year 2000. Wow, yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, and, you know, again, it's just like you know, we, we we actually know people who run theaters in town, and they're always struggling. They're always cash strapped. They're always struggling, and they don't know where they're going to get their next dollar. And you know, they have to go to to, to uh, uh, supporters and underwriters, and and uh, it's always a struggle. But he's yeah. found a way to uh, kind of in perpetuity basically drive revenue to the theater, and I think that's. Uh, 
really great for the theater and great for the high school because he says also that they help produce the student plays at Fairfax High School where the market is located. And, um, you know, so the students benefit directly from it as well. I mean, it's, and, and when you think about it, it's, it really is amazing because a lot of theaters survive from membership fees. Um, and his membership is the public that comes to the market. You know, the, the buying of the tickets. Yeah. That's it. They don't have to, you know, try to convince someone to buy a yearly membership. People just show up. We also produce student plays that happen throughout the year. And sometimes they're involved in the professional production. But we've had, you know, we've had Fairfax students on stage. We've had Al Pacino and Jesse Eisenberg and Denzel Washington. And some amazing, you know, the, the top actors of LA, LA have been on our stage, as well as the community. Yeah, so the, the, the fact that um, they've got like A-list actors like, you know, uh, Al Pacino and Denzel Washington uh, performing on the stage at the theater um, and, and giving students at the, at the high school an opportunity to, you know, help produce these shows. It gives them, yeah. you know, uh, you know, something to put on their resume. So if they want to go into acting, you know, they've got that, you know, practical experience there at the theater. And, and of course, you know, we're, it's, we're in Hollywood. So having access to those, that caliber of actor uh, to interact with as well, it's uh, pretty awesome. Well, but, even with regard to the students, um, the organization also provides them with jobs. Yeah. They provide them with paying jobs for um, social and economic um, education. And also they, also, they also have the opportunity to, to volunteer for the organization as well. Mm. You come to the Melrose Trading Post, you're getting a cross-section of LA, a beautiful cross-section of LA. Great things to look at, to buy great food and people. It's the best people watching place the city has to offer, in my humble opinion. <laughs> I think LA is a must visit. Here's how I explain it to people. I think imagine the United States tipping toward the Pacific Ocean, right? So it's tipping. Then all the kind of crazy individuals kind of regard rolling down <laughs> And they, they land, they land in LA and they can't go any farther because it's the Pacific Ocean. So LA is filled with unique, interesting, a little wacky, but fun to see people. And this location, the Mauro Trading Close, is a place to do that. I thought it was perfect, that guy that kind of walked behind him with the lab coat. And what was that? What did and he have? his feet. He had lunch. The guy with the lab coat. <laughs> the guy with the lab coat walking behind him, and like the what were the what was he wearing on his feet? Those were like, I don't know. There were clogs or something. It, it was a like bizarre. Like he said, wacky, unique. It was like it was like perfect timing. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of the joke about LA, right? It's kind of a little wacky. Um, he also mentioned crazy. Crazy. Cray cray. So yeah, I mean, he's not not wrong entirely. I mean, it, I don't know if they're all rolling to the West Coast, but I mean, people come here from all over the country because they know LA as being kind of the creative capital of the country, right? Uh, movies are here, the create, a lot of creative industries are here. And so um, when you go to the market, you, you get kind of this interesting kind of cross section of the real people who live here, um, including all of the people that you just talked about. Um, I think we get the wacky. I think Florida gets the crazy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not going to argue on that. We don't have, um, I mean, you can see behind me. You know, it doesn't look like a department store, does it? It doesn't look like a mall. It looks like people of this city selling things they care about. So it's a true local shopping experience. It's not a marketing word for us. If you're in this market, it's because you made it or it's something you're collecting that you love, but it's you and it's in front of you on that table. Yeah, so when I was at the market, I um, I did a little shopping. Yeah. And um, I, I found a couple of gems. So um, we were just kind of walking around and I there was this guy, this older guy that had... Um, he was interesting. Yeah, he was very interesting. That he had uh, a little booth that was, he only sold belts. They're all vintage belts, and he had like hundreds of belts, right? 
and um, all different sizes and shapes and you know old belts, new belts. But he, I've I, it, this one caught my eye when I was there. This is actually um, so I did. I have a, the belt I have on right now. I think I bought it online. It was like a hundred bucks. Um, but you know, it's a real leather belt. I mean, we go to the store nowadays, you buy a belt. It's not really a leather belt. It's usually like a composite and it doesn't like last like a year or two and then it falls apart. Um, but the one I got will last forever, I think. But, but this one, which was $40, that is actually, I don't know if you can see this, but that's a real, that's a sterling silver buckle, a real silver buckle. And even the rivets on here, if you look at the, all the detail work on the belt, all of those rivets are actually sterling silver I and mean, you can actually see if you look on the back you tell it's silver because you see the um oxidation there on the back but i mean if you bought this belt in a store this would cost like 300 bucks i mean i got it for 40 dollars it was a good I mean, deal <laughs> no I mean, that is a good deal I mean, that's a i would not pay 300 dollars if you went to one of the other stores this would be 300 dollars easily this belt i will um, i will say if you're ever attacked by a werewolf, you're going to be so happy you have that silver bu silver buckle. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I also now, found this this one I liked. This one, uh, this, yeah, there's this guy you, you know, who's this artist that was there. He has these posters, and he actually there. You see here it's signed. He actually signed it for me. And he had all these different like LA landmarks. This one is obviously pinks, pinks. which we talked about in the in the Melrose episode. But uh, I'm gonna put this up in my kitchen, I think. But I thought this was really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a lot of. Um, I mean, they were. He he pretty much drew out LA, right? The Hollywood sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah like every landmark. Hollywood. He had even obscure ones like the Million Dollar Theater, which. For us, isn't obscure, but for someone watching from you know yeah. Ohio, they're not going to know what the Million Dollar Theater is. Dodger Stadium, Angel Stadium. Yeah, I mean, it was just like everywhere. They had everything, so they had yeah. something for everyone there. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. So um, some really cool things at the market. Yeah. By the way, the the guy with um, where you bought the belt, um, we tried to get him on camera, but he would not come on camera because he said what to you? Well, I think he was worried that you know. Um, he didn't, he didn't want publicity. He just, want, I think he's looking for a more organic kind of people walking by and, and buying stuff. He didn't want to pu publicize that would draw in other people that would want to have a belt stall in the, in the market. So, um, he didn't want competition, I think is what it was. Yeah, he said he's, he, he's very concerned about competition. He didn't want, cause he's got a great idea. It's actually, he has really good stuff. No, he did. And and the reason why I bring him up again is because I was kind of listening in to his conversations. He was he was talking to some of the customers and there was a gen one of the items that he had there was a, a gladiator belt, sort of like skirt. And um, the man it was, was actually a prop, right? It was a prop, a movie prop. So the, yeah. the man was so excited that he found it and he was trying to give him some history uh, behind the skirt. Um, he wasn't really sure um, where it came from, but he was saying to the man, you know, if you do your research, you might be able to find which studio that came from or who created the studio that created it. And he was throwing out names like Paramount, MGM, um, uh, you know, it's just, and it was just so interesting for me to hear him just talking about the stuff that yeah. he had there. It's just... If you're not representing the people that live in your city and the culture that you create, whether it's theater, whether it's this market, then something is off, right? It's so important that everyone is represented in what you do in terms of expression and you're out, you're out visible to the public. It's also what people want. It's, the time is done where people, certainly in a city like Los Angeles, want to just be around the people that look like them. That's not interesting in my humble opinion. It's important to be around people with different life experiences, with a different outlook. And then that's what's interesting where connections and unique connections happen. So it's been our core value from day one. And I'm so happy about that because our theater has produced very diverse plays. The market has always been very diverse in what we offer and the people that sell here. So it's been like that since day one. So when movements happen, 
for example, Black Lives Matter, we feel like we're in sync with the core values of that movement. And then it's only a good thing. It's only comfortable, right? And it actually helps us. A, a nice story, uh, I just recently bought furniture myself from my daughter from a, a furniture vendor, his name is Martin. And uh, Martin has told me that when he first started many, many years ago, he was uh, you know, on the brink of disaster. He just did not have a way to support himself and his family. He said that having a chance to connect with the people that come here who are selling his furniture has saved his life. And, uh, and he is a good, good business person. He gets this uh, furniture for second hand, he, and uh, it's furniture that's both affordable and interesting, and he, and he does nice things with it. Yeah, so he, 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 one thing he was mentioning was about um, the opportunity that the market brings for um, you know people who want to go into business for themselves. And you know, as, as we're as we're aware, you know, starting a business is really challenging, especially now. It, it's lot, very expensive. You have rent, you have staffing, you have utilities, you've got insurance. I mean, marketing. taxes, marketing. I mean, it, the the list is like crazy. It goes on and on and on and on. And very very expensive. So, but at the market, you know, you can take an i you can go from just a simple idea, and at a very very small scale, and you can um, equitably, you know. Um, start a little store um, at the market and, and try your hand at, you know, being an entrepreneur. And, you know, someone who's a kind of on lower socioeconomic status could could come in and still be able to do that there at the market. You yeah, know, they you have to have a lot, you don't have to have a lot of money. Yeah, you, they could potentially thrive. And, you know, one of the things that we were talking about with regards to the vendors and being there at the market, which is great for them, is that there's cross-pollinating you know it's like you could have a product that you sell that's very unique to you yeah i have a product that i sell that's very unique to me and my customers and, and of course yours to your customers and you know if we had our own brick and mortar store your customer may never even come into my store but because you're there in a market you know you're going from table to table or, or shop to shop to shop and you're seeing what's there and you have that opportunity of someone buying something that would have never thought of buying your product. And yeah, so I mean, like the great I, opportunities. I, if I could go be going to the soap stall and buying a bar of soap and then, you know, discover the guy with the belts next door. And I wasn't planning on buying a belt when I went to the market, but you happened upon it when you went to get to look at the soap. And so then you, yeah, then, yeah, it's all this kind you're of there to buy soap. cross pollinating. You're there to buy soap. Your pants start to droop a little bit. You think, okay, well, how about that? A belt right next door. Yeah. <laughs> My droopy pants <laughs> led to the belt buying spree that I had. Right. <laughs> um, I mean, there's so many people. I mean, I just look around. Nina is a new vendor here in the market. She's the kind of person who everyone kind of gets to know right away. Nina Organic. She's very good at making real connections with people who walk by and do everyone around her. And she's a newer vendor, but does fantastic the kind of vendor we want in the market. Um, and there's so many unique things in the market. Um, Lisa, um, she sells lamps uh, that uh, she gets old metal uh, parts, guitars, whatever, and then creates an art piece out of it and then attaches wiring and a light bulb. Yeah, so the market has, uh, you can make a day at the market, literally make a day because you've got all the, you can shop all the vendors that are there and there's a, an array of things, obviously. And then, you know, there's a, there's, they have um, like a small food area with about maybe five or six um, trucks, uh, food trucks. And, uh, but they have this big open area where the students usually sit during the afternoon during school session. So there's a very very large seating area. Of course, a um, lunch area. Yeah, lunch area, and the, and um, so you can grab some food. You can sit down. You have a coffee. You can you can have your lunch. You can people watch while you're there. Um, so so yeah. So you could you know you, you literally make a day of it. And then of course outside of the market, literally just outside of the market, you've got the Fairfax district, um, which which is was originally um, 
uh, the kind of the center of the Orthodox Jewish community here in um, in Los Angeles, or not originally, but for many years it was. And um, it's kind of evolved a little bit since then, and it's now the kind of the center of the skateboarding university. I don't know if you know this, but skateboarding was actually invented in Los Angeles. Um, oh, I did not know. And that. Um, so, uh, skateboarding has really, as you kind of saw there with uh, the, the kids uh, in that shot, um, uh, skateboarding has kind of resurged in Los Angeles, not just for kids, but you know, as a cultural kind of phenomenon. And there's a lot of shops that cater to that skateboarding community, and among them, of course, is the very famous Supreme store there on um, on, on Fairfax, among many, many others. But, you know, further down the street is... Well, you have Cantor's. You also have the Cantor's Farmer's Deli, Market. Yeah. Farmer's Market, which is attached to the Grove. So that's something um, to visit as well. Um, and then, nor uh, excuse me, yes, north, you have West Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And then to the east side, you have Hollywood. To the west side, you have Beverly Hills. So, and you have Melrose right there. And you have Melrose, yeah. Yeah, that we talked about. Yeah. So, um, so there's, there's a lot to do. Uh, within walking distance, you can literally park your car and everything. You just you spend the whole day without ever getting your right. car again. And don't forget the um, outdoor murals. Yeah, um, all the street art. All, all the, the street, street art, art in the on Fairfax, on Melrose. Uh, so there's a lot to to do and see. So you Absolutely. could spend your whole Sunday morning, afternoon, even evening there in the Melrose district. So I've been, I co-founded the market with uh, my partner, Whitney Weston, 22 years ago, uh, every day, literally every Sunday. I am uh, in a state of appreciation that this market works, that people enjoy it, that I feel like I've had an impact on someone's life through all the money we've raised through the, for the Fairfax High School, for all the students we've been involved with and helped in their education, through all the artists that have come through Greenway Court Theater. I feel like you know, I'm the luckiest guy in the world because what I service I have to offer, I can see the result around me every day. So literally within this block of Melrose and Fairfax Avenue, I can see how my life and my service has helped me. And that is a gift as you get older. I thought less about it when I started the market at whatever age in my uh, 30s, but now I treasure it. So during COVID, during this time I have to wear this crazy mask, I am one lucky guy. Uh, so some interesting things that we that I found with regards to Fairfax High School. The last time you you we talked about Melrose, you were mentioning you gave threw out just a few names of some of the uh, well known alumni there at. Um, at Fairfax High School. By the way, Fairfax High School was uh, open in 1924. And let's see if, if uh, people will recognize some of these names. Um, let's see, David Arquette. Yeah. Right. Uh, we have, how about Darla Hood? Do you know, remember Darla Hood? Uh, from the Little Rascals. Yeah. Yeah, from the Little Rascals. Yeah, Darla. Uh, Darla. We have uh, Timothy Hutton. Oscar winner. This is kind of jumping around. This is a cross section of cross -section. the acting universe. Exactly. We have um, Tito Jackson. Oh, Michael really? Michael Jackson's brother from the Jackson Five. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Can you do your, you your know best, from, Eddie Murphy? You know, they're from Indiana. They're from my home state. Really? I, yeah, no, I didn't they, know that. Gary, Indiana. That's where they were born and raised. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, Demi Moore. Demi she, Moore? Yeah. She dropped out. Of Fairfax High School at the age of 16 years old. What would she drop out for? Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> Probably going to acting. Maybe she was uh, chasing Aston Kutcher for her. No, that she's much older than, <laughs> than when that happened. I know he was a baby. Um, Carol Lombard. Carol Lombard. Carol Lombard. 
Wow. Exactly. Ricardo Montalvan, Mickey Rooney. Of course, the last time you mentioned the Red Hot Chili Peppers, mm -hmm. uh, most of the member over all of the members of the Red Hot Chili Peppers went to Fairfax High School, and also uh, Slash from Guns N' Roses and some of the members of that uh, band as well. And dun dun dun, Phil Spector. Is that his airplane going over? <laughs> yeah, he's trying to sabotage. He's, us. he's trying to flee the country. He's evil. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're, we're right by the Van Nuys Airport, if you didn't know that. And it's, uh, uh, this is right now, uh, High around time. the right time. Yeah. So all of the, all of the celebrities, the YouTubers and the uh, celebrities are, are now going to, where are they going? I have no idea where they're going. Like they're, 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 they're getting on their jet airplanes. San Francisco. Literally like oh, two blocks down the street is where they park all their jet airplanes. Anyway, that's why you heard the airplane. Um, yeah. That's, that's a quiet list. Right. So, um, yeah. So, oh, I, you know what? And I should have done this. I should have said Ricardo Montalvan as the plane was going over and I could have said, the plane, the plane. The plane, plane. Yes. Miss that, miss that you missed opportunity. your opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, All right. that's it. Yeah. So that's our uh, episode of the Melrose Trading Post. Um, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we're going to be continue covering... Uh, activities in Los Angeles, food places, neighborhoods. If you have any suggestions, go to the comment section down below. Let us know what you want us to cover and we'll put it in the queue. Um, but until then, please like and subscribe. Yeah. And tell all your friends. Uh, we're trying to create our following. Send us comments, comments, comments. Yeah. You may see that some episodes are a little different than others. We're trying to find our niche. If you hate it, tell us. If yeah. you love it, tell us. We're Let just, us know how it's going. To, we're trying to figure it out for ourselves. Yeah. Um, but your comments would be very helpful. So, the plane, the plane, the plane, <laughs> small plane, small plane. Wait. <laughs> it's very hot here, actually. So we have all the doors open, and uh, that's why we're you can hear the airplanes. All right. Uh, see you. See you next Thursday. Bye. Bye. <laughs>